hour of 8.30 in the morning. Let's just, let's just jump into it. Let's just do it. Let's just make it happen. I have exactly zero idea. The end is loading. <laughs> um, I have no idea what to expect. I've just heard really good things about it. The game takes, according to how long to beat, under two hours to get through. So we're going to have ourselves a fun little time romping through what is Das Stanley Parable. And if ever it loads, happy little trees. Basically, oh, there it goes. All right. I, again, I'm, I, I haven't seen much on this game. I heard about it a lot. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor at his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul ending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. Was he? And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Did I, though? Did I? Is this gonna be one of those, uh, what was that movie? Stranger Than Fiction? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Who farted? <laughs> nice coffee mug, dude. Ah, oh, got the classic fake plant. Someone had a download going in that cutscene, and I think it was over here. No? Oh my god, these... I love that these still have a floppy drive. Is this... is 432... 432 is literally, like, their only task is to sharpen pencils, is my guess. This guy's got a phone, so he talks to people. Uh, this person also... Why do you have such different phones, though? Like, you have a rotary... F what do we do here? I hate Mondays. That's a very... Yep. See, this guy, though, 435, does not have to rely on 432 to sharpen pencils because 435 has their own pencil sharpener. I'm very confused as to what happens in this office. Somebody was making copies. Somebody really didn't like making copies. Is, is this the way to the meeting room? Is this going to shut on me? You're going to shut on me, aren't you? Yeah? No? Huh? How come 426 is over here? 427. All right. You know what? I just don't question the office setup. That's Oh, what's this mug say? I love, I like work, I just hate my boss. All right. I can't open other doors. Or can I? Hmm. Be my valentine. 
Did they just go to like a yard sale and pick up phones for this office? What's happening? Is this, is it the Standing end times? Ron touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference, nor did it advance the story in any way. Somebody was playing solitaire. Excuse you, Captain Narrator. Ah, yes, a phone and a mug. Someone was moving into an office? Ah, yes, putting up the drop ceiling. And, oh, somebody that hates Mondays. Somebody spilled coffee. Look at that close-up picture of leaf droplets. Oh, all right, I can close that door. Can I reopen it? I sure can. Oh, boy. Where the heck is the conference room? That's not it. I'm assuming I'll get there eventually. Close doors. Oh. To a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. I don't know if I trust you, sir. First off, these doorknobs are very low. Should I listen to the voice and enter the door on the left, or disobey and do the door on the right? I don't like having my fate decided this for me. This is not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. It's very blue. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. What? This one? It is the first open door on my left. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. Oh shit, I can't go back. <laughs> Uh-oh. Caution, do not lie. If you are lying right now, stop. All right. Can I? I want that. No, come back. <laughs> Fubbernuck. Uh, I want that sign in my, in my home. Caution, do not lie. If you are lying, stop it right now. Do not jump from the cargo lift while it is in motion. Will cause death. Penalty for misuse of cargo lift, $1,000. Penalty for jumping off the cargo lift, $5,000. Chimney Christmas. Can I go through this? No, I already checked that door. I guess we are going down the cargo elevator. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been- What? Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why, I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Give me a chance. I don't even know where I'm going anymore. Now listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked through the red door. I don't know how much more I want to disobey. Like, what happens if we listen to the narrator? I don't like not trusting people just for the sake of not trusting people. And if this was the Matrix, I would take the red pill. Oh, thank God you are willing to listen to me. Do you see that I really have wanted you to be happy all this time? The problem is all these choices. The two of us always trying to get somewhere that isn't here. Running What's happening? And running and running, just the way you're doing right now. Don't you see that it's killing us, Stanley? I just... I want it to stop. I would... We would both be so much happier if we just stopped and I think well I think I have a solution here let me show you um that's a lot of loading 
The little Krona. Hello. Hi, Sammy. How's it going? Oh, uh-oh. What do we want? What are we looking for? Hmm? I don't know, man. What the heck is going on? All the world's a stage, apparently. What's happening here? Here. Yes. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? If we just stay right here, right in this moment with this place, Stanley, I think I feel happy. I actually feel happy. Yeah, but I can't stay, though. No, wait. Where are you going? Oh, no. Stay away from those stairs. If you hurt yourself, if you die, the game will reset. We'll lose all of this. I'm so concerned. Please, no, Stanley. Let me stay here. Don't take this from me. Why? What? Please, Stanley, think about what you're doing. I'm trying, dude. I don't... I don't want to end it all. This isn't what I wanted out of life. What happened? What brought me here? I just showed up to work. I showed up to push buttons and now here I am. What happens if we go back out? I'm so concerned. Good, good. We can't be too safe. Promise me you won't go back there. Hmm? Just, just stay here. Managed to track down your Twitch channel. Aw, oh, thanks. I would have posted a link, but I was like, I don't want to, like, advertise myself in the main channel here. Can I accidentally walk off the edge? Nope, I can't. Okay, cool. Nah, it's too late. Sorry, dude. Ugh. I really don't want to... What do we talk about? You're risking everything we achieved here. You heard me before, didn't you? You will die. What about this isn't getting through to you? <sighs> no! Oh. Thank no. No, no, what are you doing, Stanley? I t what? Please, I don't I'm know. asking you not to take this away from me. I can't go back to what I was before. If you die, we'll both go back. Why are you doing this? <gasps> Thanks for the follow. That is my fetish. Stanley, let's go back to the other room. Can you do that for me? My God, is this really how much you dislike my game? But you'll throw yourself from this platform over and over to be rid of it? You are literally willing to kill yourself to keep me from being happy. Am I reading the situation correctly? Or maybe you're just getting a kick out of it. I don't know anymore. Do you actually want to stay alive? Or are you just teasing me? I wanted us to be happy here, Stanley. I really did. I wish I still thought that was possible. I'm so concerned. How do I even anything? How do I, can I, should I take this? Do I take the things? What do I do here? That's a long height to fall from, dude. How am I not dead? Geronimo. Is it over? It's going to restart, isn't it? I'm going back. What? Are we start? We're starting in our office again. Note the time: eleven twenty-one. Eleven twenty-one. I don't know if that's going to be important, but seeing as the clock was in my peripheral. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Right. 
How much do I have to disobey? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. All right, last time I went through the door on my right. Let's see what happens if we do follow his instruction. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. How to solve a dispute with a coworker. Let it ball up inside you. Take it out passive aggressively on other coworkers. Resent coworkers for not supporting you more. <laughs> Using slides to ensure employees that everything is okay. Someone had some fun with this one. And I'm into it. Have you been obedient? Uh, I am. I'm going to try an obedience run right now. Considering we had to start over. Everyone is unique. You, most of all. Aw, uh, thank you. Number of slides on this slide. <laughs> charts, slides, charts, and slides. Why is this so entertaining? Rate at which charts on the same slide depict the same information. Rate of increase in graphs per slide. Oh my. Please, no more charts. Please, I'm begging, stop. The boss appreciation minute. Wow. Ooh, broom closet. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Did he? What if I don't, though? What if I stay here in the broom closet? There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow. Just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Why has he got, like, velvet wallpaper? There's no one at the reception desk. What? Ah, the executive bathroom. That's where you take the corporate shit. I think you got a lowball glass hanging out here. Looks like the wallpaper from the Satanic Temple. It really does. Yeah, like the second floor, when it was all red. It's the same pattern in the lower floor, just black. You gonna close on me? Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this. What dark secret was being held from him? What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Uh-huh. Very concerned with what's happening here. How many endings does this game have? Does anyone know? Hello? Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that what? led Mind Control Facility. But there's an escape here. 
Oh, come on. All right, I said I was going to go for an obedience run. We're doing obedience. Mind control me, daddy. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? What? Thought to what? Himself. What? Did he have the what? 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 Hello? Cameras. Uh-huh. What's anything written here? It's just numbers. Is this a random number sheet? I can't zoom in. Oh, uh, okay, I can crouch. That doesn't help me, though, because I crouch beyond the table. I can't jump. Or if I can, it's a... Employee observation protocol. I mean, there's only one button to push. Now the monitors jumped to life. Their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building. Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen. And Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. All right, you've opened my eyes, sir. Who works in here? Like, you've got monitors. Listen, mouse. You've got monitors, like, down here. Like, who's monitoring 499? Anybody? If you're sitting up here, nobody's monitoring 499. You gotta come over to the edge. Hello, 499. To be fair, though, this is a really cool room. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? Don't most of us. But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Would I? How do I do that? Five. Oh no. What's in here? What a what a neat little whatever that is. What does this do? Console Console disabled. I guess I'm going into facility power, but how does it feel that I got your pen, bitch? One. Two. Where's three? Hello, three. I saw five. Five's up there. One, two. That's four. I'm going to find these first just in case it's like a timed thing. I said that was four. Where's three? Hello, three? Hello? I'm starting to get a very Metal Gear feel right now. You know what I mean? Oh, there's three. So I'd come back here, hit three, go up the stairs, hit four. I don't know if this even does anything. And then, is there like a shortcut off of here? Can I just like... No? Alright, cool. 
I'm hoping this isn't a timed thing because it seems like there are no shortcuts to be taken. Then again, this could just be a whole lot of nothing. But I'm going to hit five on my way through anyway. See, because it's dark in here. And it says mind control offline. Big red button. Tried pushing it. Didn't do anything. Mind controls idle awaiting input. You know what I mean? I'm gonna like find out that I'm actually here to turn this whole thing on and ruin lives of millions. And when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. What am I doing? So turn it off. He's not gonna actually tell me. Hello, just stopping in for a moment to say hi. Hi, Prince Bubbles. How are you? I hope you're having a delightful breakfast. What has happened? Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? I can still move! Yes. He had won. He had defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? <laughs> and I would hide them too well. Chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his Breakfast skin. is real good though. Feeling French toast on homemade bread and real maple syrup. Oh. The new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Mmm, coffee. Are we... Achievement unlocked. Beat the game. That was quick. Obviously, I need more coffee. As long as it's not coffee, you're good. Okay, so we restart. Uh, still 1121. I'm going to grab another coffee really quick before we begin. But, I think, what I want to do, I have this coin here. It says yes on one side, no on the other side. And I think I want to use this to decide where we go next. Since we seem to have a lot of 50-50 splits, I'm going to start flipping a coin, and we'll decide, yes, we follow the directions, no, we disobey. But first, oh, that's going to be so cool. Yeah, but first, I'll be right back, because I'm going to get more coffee. You guys hang right here, and I'll be back. Stanley stood for a long time in one spot. It's part of a game. He likes to see how long he can go without dying. So far, he's doing excellent. 
And if he just stays right where he is, I'm sure he'll keep up that good momentum. Let's observe the genius at work. I'm a plug in me phone. Okay, cool. All right, let me. I'm gonna try this real quick. So if I flip the coin, land it on the back of my hand, I can bring it up. I don't know if you guys can see it. Um, you'll probably just have to trust me. But what I'll do is, well, thank you. I'll fl I flip the coin, catch it, flip it on the back of my hand, and I'll show you what we've got. It's going to involve a little bit of trust, but I think we can do it. Stanley knew the office layout like the back of his hand. It sure he did. a matter of time before he found the others, wherever they were. Just a matter of time. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Did he? Yes, yes, he did. Okay, door on the left we go. I am going to also try every door on my way through. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Not again. I won't be part of this. I'm not going to encourage you. I'm not going to say anything at all. I'm just going to be patient and wait for you to finish whatever it is you enjoy doing so much in this room. Please take your time. Do we wait in the broom closet and see if anything happens? Yes. All right. So welcome to my broom closet, everyone. I hope you're having a delightful Sunday. Those of you that are celebrating um, the first re recorded uh, zombie outbreak, which was contained very quickly, to be honest. Um, happy that day. Uh, for those of you that it's just another Sunday, like myself, welcome to Sunday. Here we are, Sunday in the broom closet. Let me give you the tour. So you can see over here on the floor, I have the cardboard box that I sometimes stand on. It keeps me separated from the concrete floor. You know, it's like um, it's like having a barrier between you and the rest of the world. This is my length of, of hose that uh, for some reason I threaded through the bottom of this uh, shelving system. It's uh, honestly my favorite length of hose because like, it curls up so nicely, and I could, I had it stored underneath the shelf here, but it just doesn't want to stay. Um, you can see I used to have more cardboard. It was over here at one point, uh, but I put it under that side because as the earth settles, the shelf got a little wobbly wobbly. Um, so I needed to level it out, so I put some cardboard under there. I got a roll a spool of what looks like wire with, um, was that like the nuclear symbol? Kind of. Biohazard? I think that's biohazard. No. No, biohazard is different. I gotta get my symbols down. You know, I used to be trained in that stuff, and I'm not anymore. Roll of duct tape. Very important. Uh, adjustable wrench. Big ol' adjustable wrench. You know, I... I say big ol' adjustable wrench, but I'm pretty sure that's as far open as it gets, based on the little thumb screw there. A couple more rolls of duct tape, very important. These little trays you can actually order. There's a business magazine that you can order in mass quantities, these like plastic trays for storing things. I know this because I used to work a factory, and I saw the magazine. It was, uh, it was a delight because I had to order some stuff once for the company. Um, got a, I got one wrench over here. You can see uh, it's hard to see like the actual wrench. It's one of my favorite wrenches. Um, I got a couple of pliers. Another adjustable wrench. This actually used to connect to my length of hose. It goes to nothing now. This is just nothing. Um, as you can tell by the black color. Just looked it up. It is the nuclear symbol. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Sammy. Um, yeah, as you can tell by the black color of the hose, this is not a hose intended for water. It's a pneumatic hose. It's actually got a mesh lining in it to keep the hose from exploding from all the air pressure inside it. The duct tape is to fix any pressure explosions. 
I got another pair of pliers up here. I got stuff up on the top shelf. That's that's my best stuff up there. Um, I don't share that with anyone. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not making an exception here. I'm sorry. I haven't finished the walls yet, as you can see. Um, but then I've got... You'll notice the irony here. That I have a mop bucket without water. And a broom without a dustpan. They go together like... Peanut butter and mayonnaise. Um... They just, they work so well. You know, I can sweep everything into a pile, and then I can pick everything from that pile up by hand and put it into the mop bucket, where I compress it in the top, and it squeezes out those little squares there, like Play-Doh, and just... And then I've got really nice, neat little uh, spaghetti ribbons. Okay, I think we've actually been in here for a while now. I don't know if uh, if we have to be in here for any certain length of time. Let's uh, Let's ask the computer, shall we? Hey, Google. The Stanley Parable, staying in the broom closet. According to the Stanley Parable wiki, fandom, it is not mentioned unless Stanley steps inside. If Stanley decides to step inside, the narrator tells him to leave several times. If Stanley does not leave the broom closet, the narrator will start calling him names and alludes in the fourth wall to a broom closet ending, though no such ending exists. Huh. No such ending exists. But. What if I exit and come back in? I want to really piss the narrator off. No? Alright, uh, maybe I'll come back in my next run through. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Did I? No. No, I didn't. Downstairs we went. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished? His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all? None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. Like I'm going in circles. Why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Oh, heck! Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? Why are you like this? For that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange. This can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief, Stanley felt, to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. What's happening? Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field. And it too appeared. It was so much fun. And Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Uh-huh. Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, th thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, 
The truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was, in fact, a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself, too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control, that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. Nope. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. What? What? This is the story of a woman named Mariella. What? Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. What? And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. Uh-huh. I know what is real and what isn't. Right. It was comforting to think this. And in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. Did it? But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. Wow. The end is never. Here we are, 1121. We're going to wait here for a minute. I want to see if the second hand revolving actually changes the minute hand. If this clock actually functions. So how is everyone today? How's your Sunday going? Mine was wonderful and then I ended up here at work. My goodness, the clock actually functions. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Okay, so now that we've we've done the coin flipping thing, and I might go back to that in a minute, but I've already done one run through entirely listening to everything he says. I've done one at random based on my coin. I'm going to do one where I ignore everything he says and do the opposite. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. 
This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Wow. Yes. This room. What a be- But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. No, I didn't. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. Now, doing fairly well. That's good. Good, good, good. Um, now is a point where I'm not entirely sure what I should do. Um, I get on the lift, right, and it starts taking Good us Stanley, away. I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stan. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me. I'm asking for her. We. But in his eagerness to prove that he is in control of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do, Stanley leapt from the platform and plunged to his death. Good job, Stanley. Everyone thinks you are very powerful. Do they? <laughs> Wow. All right. So this similar thing, but not jumping off the lift. Gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Perhaps. Door on the right. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. The lounge was sublime, a work of art. What was it about this room that called so deeply and so personally to Stanley? But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. No. As Stanley picked up the phone, a white light engulfed him, filling him not just with radio. I unplugged it! Hope. Hope for a life reunited one. Wait. Oh, goodness. Stanley, did you just unplug the phone? I did. That's not how phones work, dude. Your choice. How did you do that? You actually chose incorrectly. I didn't even know that was possible. Let me double check. No. It's definitely here, clear as day. Stanley picks up the phone. He's taken to his apartment where he finds his wife, and the two pledge themselves to one another. Music comes in, fade to white, roll credits. Not picking up the phone is actually somehow an incorrect course of action. How is that even possible? None of these decisions were supposed to mean anything. I don't understand. How on earth are you making meaningful choices? What did you... Wait a second. Did I just see... No, that's not possible. I can't believe it. How had I not noticed it sooner? You're not Stanley. You're a real person. <sighs> I can't believe I was so mistaken. 
This is why you've been able to make to make correct and incorrect choices. And to think I've been letting you run around in this game for so long. If you've made any more wrong choices, you might have negated it entirely. It's as though you completely ignored even the most basic safety protocol for real-world decision-making. Or did you not grasp the severity of the situation? Well, I won't have that kind of risk on my watch. I'm going to stop the game for a moment so we can educate you properly on safe decision-making in the real world. Please observe this helpful instructional video. Choice. It's the best part of being a real person. But if used incorrectly, it can also be the most dangerous. For example, in this scenario, a hypothetical real person named Stephen has a choice. He could spend years helping improve the quality of life for citizens of impoverished third world nations. Or he could systematically set fire to every orphan living in a 30 kilometer radius of his house. Which choice would you make? Remember that unlike here, the real world makes sense. And at no time should you make a choice that does not conform to rational logic. If you find yourself speaking with a person who does not make sense, in all likelihood, that person is not real. Allow the person to finish their thought, then provide an excuse why you cannot continue talking. Turn to a partner and practice saying, my goodness, is it 4.30? I'm supposed to be having a back sack and crack. What? What is a back sack and crack? Excellent. Making choices on a regular basis is the best part to a healthy decision-making process. Most medical professionals recommend making at least eight choices per day. Do you make more than eight? Less? And finally, if you begin to wonder if your choices are actually meaningful and whether you'll ever make a significant contribution to the world, just remember that in the vast infiniteness of space, your thoughts and problems are materially insignificant and the feeling should subside. At this time, your instructor will guide you in an exercise to test and reinforce the material covered in this video. Ah, welcome back. You may have noticed that this room has begun to deteriorate as a result of narrative contradiction. But not to worry. Now that you're properly informed on good decision-making, we're going to revisit a choice you made just a few minutes ago and see what the correct thing to do would have been. This way, please. What? Danger. Danger everywhere. Stop, 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 stop. There's charts all over the place. There's an exit there. A bunch of forklifts just stacked up. A railing to nowhere. choices are meaningful, we can't have you jumping off the platform and dying. Imagine the main character dying senselessly halfway through the story. That story what? would make no sense at all. We just need to get you home as soon as possible before the narrative contradiction gets any worse. Unfortunately, it seems this place is not well equipped to deal with reality. Railing to Nowhere is my new band name. <laughs> Hell yes! That's a great band name. Where am I even? Almost there. You'll take the door on the left, back to the correct ending, the story will have resolution once again, and you'll be home free in the real world. Now remember, all you need to do is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back in the other direction. Perhaps we're not too late. That is such a weird filing cabinet. Oh man, this is a, what a weird place. What a strange time. What a what a what a thing. What a what's happening? 
Is it actually going to force me? Like, is this as bad as I can make it? One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, B, four, five, six, B, four, five, six, B, seven, eight, nine, zero, seven, eight, nine, zero. Okay. All right. I guess it's forcing my hand. Ruined. You, I can't believe, after everything we talked about, that you... My story! You've destroyed my work! Why? For what? What did you get out of that? What did you think was so special about seeing the game undone? Left here like so much garbage. It, well, it's worthless now. And what am I supposed to do? Even if there were a way to continue, would it be worth it? To know that my story is now incorrect? How can I go back to that? I can't erase that knowledge. I'll have to live with it forever. Reliving its impossibility forever. Oh, I couldn't live that way. Is it better to shut the game down entirely? To willingly destroy all of my work? I don't know. What's the answer? What do I do? What do I do? What do I... No, I have to. I have to shut the game down. I have to. I have to. Oh no. Oh, I'm, I'm here. I'm still here. Here in this pile of rubbish. With you. You. Who thought you were so clever. Now look where we are. My entire game is destroyed. It was the only thing in the world that was mine, and you run it into the ground. Yes, what Rody, a Sunday you stream. Happen? You just had to see? Didn't I impress upon you how important it was to be like Stanley? He actually knows how to do what I tell him to. He understands that if I say to do something, there's a damn good reason for it. That thought hadn't even occurred to you, had it? That there's a world outside of you. You're a child. Oh, my story. If you'd just gone through the door on the left, you would have seen it. There was a whole underground facility. You would have destroyed it and been victorious. It would have been so perfect. I worked so hard on it. I tried so hard. What? Is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. But in the end, it didn't even matter. Oh, God. Someone help me, right or left? Voice tells me left. Oh boy. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry. Is behave exactly as Stanley. Was. He's gonna keep resetting me. Using responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, we're going left. He entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Let me in the broom closet. Coming to a staircase, he actually stopped me to his boss's office. Dude, you're going to force it, aren't you? We're in an isolated area. There's nothing outside. Now what? Now what happens, man? You going to force a story on me? This was the executive bathroom. What's there now? Nothing. Nothing at all. Beautiful wallpaper, though. Yeah, go ahead and close. Low ball glass, still there. Why is the office green now? Very concernicus. This was a red office before. The 
Stepping inside his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this until he saw the door with a voice receiver next to it. Surely behind this door lay all the answers to his questions. And beyond all probability, he knew the passcode. He had seen it on his boss's computer just last week. Night Shark 115. Was this the code to open the door? Would it still work? There was only one way to find out. Stanley had been trained never to speak up, but now he would draw from within himself the courage to face the unknown. He drew a sharp breath and then spoke the code. Was it Night Shark? 115? <clears throat> Stanley spoke the code. Night Shark 115. He spoke it into the receiver right there on the wall. Night Shark 115. Okay, that was going to really scare me if it, like... I'm sorry, is there a problem? There is! You didn't mishear me, did you? No! Please speak the code into the receiver. I'm trying, dude! We can't get on with the story. This yeah. is a uh -huh. crucial step. Okay, Night Shark 115. N Night Shark! Okay, Hello? fine. You're not going to do it, but you know what? It's pretty humiliating to bring you this far, only for you to suddenly decide you have better things to do. Fucking I excuse you? you? One single thing for your respect. The kind of respect Stanley shows for his choices. He knows what it means to take a story seriously. If you didn't want to see what I had to show you, then why did you come here? You had a choice, you know. You could have gone through the door on the right. You could have done whatever the hell you wanted over there. Why did you come this way? Speak. Say something to me. Explain yourself, you coward. When Stanley came to a what the fuck? Doors, what the fuck? Door on his left. Stanley? Hello? Are you... Is everything okay? Stanley, please. I I need you to make a choice. I need you to walk through the door. Are you listening to me? What? Can you hear me? Is everything all right? Stanley, this is important. The story needs you. It needs you to make a decision. It cannot exist without you. Do you understand me? Whatever choice you Kevin make, Brighton. Brighting. Cannot be wrong here. We can work together. Kevin? Kevin? Whatever you do. I simply need you to... Sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, but... Fantastic narration work. Do something. Anything. This is more important than you can ever know. I need this. The story needs it. So, do you hear me? Are you there? Are you listening to this? Stanley, are you there? Okay. It's okay, I can wait. You need time to decide. Time to make sure your choice is correct. That is the best choice. That's all right. I'll wait for you to decide what's the right thing to do. Take as much time as you need. Already this was uncomfortable, and Stanley decided that as soon as he found a new space he felt safe in, that he would never leave it again in his life. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Standing now in this incredible room, Stanley for the f but eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. 
there's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please. What? Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why, I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Give me a chance. Now listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked through the red door. Except that he didn't. Aha, perhaps you misunderstood. Stanley walked through the red door. I still don't think we're communicating properly. <laughs> Fuck. Stanley walked through the red door. All right, fine, go ahead, Stanley. You want to know so badly what's out there? You want to find out what lies at the end of this road you've chosen? Well, don't let me stop you. You see? There's nothing here. I haven't even finished building this section of the map because you were never supposed to be here in the first place. Broken rooms, exposed developer textures. Is this what you had wanted? Was it worth ruining the entire story I had written out specifically for you? Do you not think I put a lot of time into that? Because I did. And in the end, it was all for nothing. Because this is what you wanted to see. Help me here, Stanley. Help elucidate these strange and unknowable desires of yours. What would have made this game better? What did you want to see? Vehicles? Skill trees? Work with me. You've given me absolutely nothing so far. Tell you what. Let me take a stab in the dark at a new design, and you can give me some feedback. There we go. A third option. This already feels leaps ahead of where we were before. Go ahead, Stanley. Take it for us. Okay, I'm going to stop you there. Now, tell me about what? your experience with this new version. Would you say that the game benefited from allowing you more choices? Feel free to be honest. I'm looking for some real critical feedback here. Okay, so we're getting somewhere. Clearly, there's something here that speaks to you. If I can be honest here, I really don't have any idea where I'm going with this. This whole third door thing was just a stab in the dark. But I guess you're into it, so let's keep this party train rolling. Here, based on the data from your previous playthrough, I've compiled a new version. And to be perfectly candid, I think I've knocked it out of the park with this one. Let's take a look. Good old Neil, Skid, Nicho Nacho, Vola. 21.3% of players skipped the intro sequence. Only the worst 3% of players. Oh. How long did it take you to get the correct door? Sure. Now, would you say that competitive leaderboard helped you feel motivated to keep walking through doors? Again, honest answers, please. Hey, I nearly forgot. I've got a prototype of a new game I've been working on, and now would be a lovely opportunity to give it some playtesting. You wouldn't mind taking a look at it, would you? Perfect. Let me boot it up. In this game, what the fuck? Goes left towards danger. You click the button to move him back to the right, and if he reaches the fire, you fail. It's a very meaningful game, all about the desperation and tedium of endlessly confronting the demands of family life. I think the art world will really take notice. But of course, the message of the game only becomes clear once you've been playing it for about four hours. So why don't you give it four hours of play to make sure it's effective? Be sure to keep notes on your experience. You heartless bastard. Did you do it because you hate babies or yeah. purely to spite me? A little bit of both. The latter, well, I don't know what to do. I'm completely out of ideas. I can't think of a single thing that might improve the experience for me. I'm not even going to try. I'm out. I'm out. I'm done. It's over. Thank you for playing. Your input was extremely valuable. Oh, hey, since my game was so awful, why don't we play someone else's game? Just to ease the pain. Let's see. What do we have here? <clears throat> yes.
This seems like it'll work. Let's give it a shot. What? Now what? Wh why? Well, Stanley, is this any better? At last, the one thing you've always desired. A game I had absolutely nothing to do with. But is it enough? Tell me that, Stanley. Will it ever be enough? Well, I'll say I this. can't jump! I'm making things for you. From now on, I will only create to fulfill a greater artistic purpose. Watch this, Stanley. I'm going to build a house. <laughs> Where? We'll go here. No, here. And then... Let's see, what does it need? I, uh, yes, of course. And just to finish it all off, yes, it's complete. I made this Stanley. Look at it. Gaze upon my work of art and feel ashamed at your own inadequacy. Ah, but you've only seen it from the outside. You've only gotten half the experience. Please, step inside and make yourself comfortable. Isn't it grand? Isn't it perfect? It could only be better if... Wait, that's it. We must rebuild it out of diamond. Diamond everything. Yes, yes, yes. Come along, Stanley. We have to go mining. <laughs> what? What is happening here? Oh my, it looks like it's going to get a bit dark. Have you brought a light? No. Nope. Oh, no, 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 no. This is far more open-ended than I had in mind. I'm looking for something more narrow and linear. Something that makes you feel utterly irrelevant. This won't do at all. One out of five. Even the diamonds couldn't save this one. Okay, new game. What is happening? <laughs> Oh no! I know what this game is, but I love it. You trapped in a glass box with no way out, listening to me talk. Oh, it's inspired. Uh, I not any better myself. What is this game even supposed to be? I can't figure it out. Oh, I'm so happy right now. Let's go find out what the hell this is. What? For those that don't know, Portal is easily one of my favorite games of all time, period, hands down. Oh, it's a puzzle. Critical thinking, Stanley. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it! Oh, what the actual shit, though? Where's Gladys in all this? No, actually, you know what? I think that's what? plenty. Oh, what? I really don't care much to what? stumble through any more. Where are we? Like, it's funny because it's all... They use the assets from Source. <sighs> what the... Oh, no. Oh, boy. What, what happened? What is going on? It's just a hallway forever. It's a forever hallway. That's all it is. 508. What's 508? Nobody knows what 508 is. I can't go in there. Is there a broom? Where's the broom closet? I want to go hide in my broom closet forever, please. Oh, it's so dark in here. There's a thing where you have Portal 2 in your Steam library. You can get a Portal gun. I have Portal 2 in my Steam library. Unfortunately, um... The Stanley Parable I have through Epic. So that doesn't help me at all. Unless it is capable of reading my Steam library. Where are we going? Without ever knowing the way. What do we do? 
Uh, you missed us going into Portal. Legitimately, the game loaded us into Portal for a minute there. Oh. And Minecraft. Oh. With the narrator. Very weird. Oh, oh well, would you look at that? There's the door to the left and the door to the right. Are we going backwards? We must be. Four two seven, that's my office. What is going on in here? Hello? I wonder what he found. If what he wanted was to be the leading man in his own story, well, perhaps he's gotten it. Down in wherever he is right now. I wonder if he's happy with his choice. And if he's learned the heavy cost that comes with it. He'll understand soon what I was trying to tell him. He needs me. Someone who will wrap everything up at the end to make sense out of the chaos and the fear and the confusion. That's who I am. That is what I mean to this world. Oh, yes. Yes, I'll be back. There's no other way. Once this ends, after it all comes to a close, then I'll be back. The end will be here soon. Very soon. I can wait. I don't know what else we need to do. The end is never, the game doesn't end. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. I wonder what happens if we answer the phone. Let's do that real quick. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Stanley felt lightheaded, butterflies in his stomach, giddy in a way he had never known before. Was it this room? A connection between the two? Could a man love a room? I mean, truly, truly, deeply, madly, love. Yes, really, really worth it being here in the room. A room so utterly captivating that even though all your co-workers have mysteriously vanished, here you sit looking at these chairs and some paintings. Really worth it. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me. I'm asking for her. This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone.
What? <laughs> gotcha. Oh, come on. Did you actually think you had a loving wife who'd want to commit their life to you? I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. Press 8 on your keyboard. Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him, and every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. Look at him there, pushing buttons, doing exactly what he's told to do. Now he's pushing a button. Now he's eating lunch. Now he's going home. Now, he's coming back to work. One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's chosen this life. But in his mind, ah, in his mind, he can go on fantastic adventures. From behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown, fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. And each day that he returned to work was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. And so he began to fantasize about his own job. First, he imagined that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. The thought excited him terribly. So he went further. He imagined that he came to two open doors and that he could go through either. At last, choice. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. The mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold. As he wandered through this fantasy world, he began to fill it with many possible paths and destinations. Down one path lay an enormous round room with monitors and mind controls. And down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. And down another was a game with a baby. And he called it the Stanley Parable. It was such a wonderful <coughs> fantasy. And so in his head, he relived it again and then again and again, over and over, wishing beyond hope that it would never end, that he might always feel this free. Surely there's an answer down some new path, mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just one more time. Are we spelling something here? But there is no answer. How could there possibly be? In reality, all he's doing is... Oh my God, we're rebuilding our office. Has. Nothing has changed. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets, the more he forgets which life is the real one. And I'm trying to tell him this, that in this world he can never be anything but an observer, that as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. But he won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here, watch this. Stanley, the next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. Okay.
for how long? I think it's the only way to progress. You see, can he just not hear me? How can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that every second he remains here, he's electing to kill himself? How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? I suppose I can't, not in the way I want him to. But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose, the same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps, well, maybe this time you'll see. Maybe this time. And I tried again. Please die? Stanley pushed a button. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. And I tried. So concerned. So here we are. Whose phone is ringing? Hi, Stanley. I uh, just wanted to leave you a message to let you know there's a few things I need you to pick up on your way home from work today. We need milk, cereal, dish soap, spaghetti, get a thing of sugar, some bread, and coffee beans, whichever ones you like. I'll give you a call if there's anything I forgot. Thanks, sweetie. See you tonight. Hmm. That's not my desk. Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Let's try following instructions and see what kind of an ending we come to. He's aware now. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Here we are again, Red Room. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean? Stanley wondered <clears throat> aloud to nobody. He began wildly tearing through papers on the boss's desk, pulling books off the shelf looking behind paintings, desperate for clues to his situation. But his attention was caught by a keypad behind the boss's desk. What could its purpose be? In fact, this keypad guarded the terrible secret that lay buried below his feet. And so the boss had assigned it. Stanley was in such a rush to get through the story as quickly as possible, he didn't even have a single minute to just let the narrator talk. That kind of anxiety isn't healthy. So he relaxed for a few moments with some calming new age music. Feeling soothed and rejuvenated, Stanley calmly walked forward into the opened passageway. That's a nice music. It is a nice music. I like it. It was very relaxing. I... I'm in such a weird place where, like, I want the game to be over because it's starting to, like... It's weird. But I also don't want it to be over. Like... 
made ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. But there's an escape here. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. Will I? The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. So concerned. Ah! As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley was what? pushed closer and closer to his demise, he reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plugging the eyeballs from a blind man. And so he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. There we go, Stanley. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. What? And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? What happened? When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? The two doors. The set of two open doors was the very first concrete piece of the Stanley Parable design. Once this room was created, the rest of the game emerged as an extension of it, an exploration of the contradiction this room posed. Corridor. The pacing of this opening section was important to get right. This corridor has been moved and altered to make sure the player reaches the two doors in a good time. The blueprint shows the office from the beginning of the game. The path from Stanley's office to the two doors was the first part of the game that was built. Sections have been added and altered throughout development through the core layout remains almost identical to the first iteration. Nature paintings. We're in like a game assets room, aren't we? The office. Button sounds. A selection of the sounds used through the game when buttons are pressed. Each sound is a mix of a keyboard stroke and a synthesized tone. Huh. File cabinets. Office computers. See, that's the one that was playing solitaire. Employee database. Credits. Man. The office. Maintenance room. An early version of the maintenance room. Good old printer. Whoa. These are screenshots of the Stanley Parable HD Remix. More endings, fewer endings, more narrators, fewer narrators, more Stanley, less Stanley. 
The point of the Stanley Parable HD Remix is to win. Am I going crazy? Maybe it isn't the same image. Was that clock there before? I don't remember. How did I go back? How do I go back? Can you check for me? The point of the Stanley Parable HD Remix is to lose. Larger. Words, words. I can't see the images because of all this text. If someone could just get rid of the text, maybe then I could see what this game is about. Warzone. All right. Oh, look, it's Tron. Alien base. Early in development, we designed an ending where Stanley would end up on a battlefield fighting aliens. The action game would become sentient and would wage war against the narrator. We realized shortly after starting to build it that it was far too jokey and on the nose for the tone of the game. Plus, some people interpreted it as making fun of people who like shooters, which is not our intention. Huh. Green light. In September 2012, we submitted the Stanley Parable to Greenlight, Valve's process of approving games for Steam. The Greenlight page had only a series of cryptic photos, which were still enough to win the com community's approval. From Civola, subject, final warning. Oh, okay, hold on. Narrator emails. After the second trailer we sent out, we asked people to email the narrator for questions. While we had intentionally planned to use these in further promotional materials, we never found the perfect use for them. Here are a selection of those emails. Greetings, omnipotent voice. I wanted to tell you... Oh, how do you stay in shape? Dear narrator, will the Stanley Parable have infinite quests? How many endings? If the Stanley Parable is really going to let me go shopping, I hope it will have a fine selection of desert boots. Partner, I am Anthony Elias, business book broker. Please partner with me in a very rewarding business venture. What do the lights in the control room do? I really want to know. The lounge. An early version of the lounge. This is pretty neat. The apartment timer. In a previous version of the choice leading to the apartment ending, a timer would give you 15 seconds to pick up the phone. Not picking up the phone would lead to a different ending. cargo lift. This second version is functionally the same as what's in the final game, but we wanted to look more like a place where cargo was actually stored. This cargo lift was always intended to offer the choice of staying on or jumping to a different path. However, after this early version, we decided we also wanted the option of the player falling to their death. Meeting room. Maintenance layout. Flow of the hallways following the first two doors was important to get right since players will replay them so many times. We discussed a number of designs, but ultimately it was the simplest version that won out. One option, two options. Three, one option. Huh. Zending. This screenshot depicts an early version of the ending known as Zending, which was eventually cut and merged with another part of the game. Zending levers. Levers were originally part of the zending. The player would pull a lever and the narrator would describe what color lever they had pulled. And then I broke it. Yep. 
going to give it a minute. Yeah, it's completely frozen up. Hmm. Well, I guess that's it. At least for now. Fortunately, I'm going to have to close it. You know, maybe. Can I actually not close it? Oh, 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 and then it crashed. Huh. I think that's about the extent of mind-numbing Stanley Parable that I can take for today. What a time. I'm going to have to look up other endings and see if I missed anything. Because that is something. What an experience. Um, yeah, we might have to come back to this at some point later on and play it again. Because that was... Oh my. Oh, oh my is right. Sammy. Oh god. All right, I need to get up and be an existing human being, but thank you guys so much for stopping by. I really appreciate you being here. I hope you have a delightful rest of your zombie day um, or non-zombie day, depending on what you're doing. And on that note, thanks again. We'll see you soon. Toodle-doodle. Hashtag, what are they doing behind the bushes? Glad to have you, Sammy. And Moo. And anyone else who might have been lurking.